thanks for the introduction. Yeah, here I'm in a bit different role maybe than from Claire and Eric, because this is also presenting work from the Meertens Institute. But <laughs> uh, and I'm very happy to answer questions, but I, I'm not, because I'm working for Claire and Eric most of my time, I'm not actually involved in developments for Nederlab, but of course I hear a lot of it also at the, at the coffee breaks and so on at the Meerdes Institute, so I, I uh, certainly will be able to, to answer some of your questions. So um, Henny Brugman, uh, who is my colleague, he is, uh, he is uh, the project leader of, of Nederlab. Um, I have already been asking him several questions, so I, I can already, on, on points that came up during our discussions today. Um, so uh, Nederlab is, uh, has started in 2013 already, so it's already quite a bit along the way, and it ends uh, next year. Um, the partners in there are the Meertens Institute, uh, Huygens, which is another uh, KNW institute in the Netherlands, uh, the Institute for Dutch Lexicology, which is now renamed into the Institute for Dutch Language, right? And the Radboud University, who have lots of uh, tools as well. Um, and it, it aims at making it possible to detect and analyze historical changes in digitized Dutch and Flemish text, uh, both history, so history, literature, cultural, linguistics, all of that is interesting uh, research perspectives. Um, it should bring all the full text uh, of these kind of materials uh, together in a user-friendly and tool-enriched research portal. And it comes from 800 till, till now. Uh, it should cover uh, in using lots of collections. Um, and it should be able to, using metadata, there will already be information about the time of the text, the uh, place, author, text type. And for that, uh, uh, data have to be enriched. That was done by teams, but also by the schoolers. And uh, for quite a while, they had a, an editorial staff that helped uh, cleaning up this kind of data. So they, uh, the target is to to have approximately 20 collections in there. Currently, if you will go to the website, you will see three, and in the one that I'm going to show you, which is a preview version of the, the next release, there is only one at the moment, but uh, it has already lots of more uh, uh, functionality. Uh, so it's a tens of billions of annotated words, and it will include uh, the newspapers from the KB, who, who from the Royal Library in the Netherlands, which are also, uh, which you saw, saw this morning in uh, the Delver uh, thing, um, a demo. Um, so in October, there will be a major update. Uh, they already planned to have last week to have the newspapers available, but unfortunately that didn't work out. So although I will be able to show you uh, how things work, the newspapers are not there yet, but in a month they will actually be. Um, so after that upgrade, then there are already we, uh, seven collections available, including newspapers, but until 1900, which is again a copyright. Um, with uh, 15.7 million titles, which range from articles up to books, and uh, also uh, 150,000 persons. Um, what is the workflow? So there is an arrangement with the collection provider, then they do some assessments of what is the quality and what is needed, and uh, mappings takes place, and then every collection you have to do lots of scripting and processing, so this is really like a labor-intensive uh, process. Um, then we link in Tesauri, and then manual creation comes in. Uh, and then there's still spelling uh, correction going on. This is, again, with the OCR problems. We add modern Dutch, which I will tell a bit about more. And we add more additional layers, which is the, the part of speech tagging and, and so on. So really the, uh, uh, the linguistic processing, the linguistic annotation letters. And then it go actually is loaded into the system. We do indexing and enabling the search. And then it becomes available into the portal. So for the, the newspaper, they are at this phase. So it just has to get available on the servers for the, the NATO lab. Uh, portal. 
So just focusing on some of these, these tasks. So um, for the spending correction and normalization, we use uh, Tickle, which is text-induced corpus cleanup, which is developed by Martin Reinhardt in the Netherlands. Um, and uh, they improved a bit on that to better deal with historical texts, but still many of the old texts, the OCR, have really bad uh, quality. And Tickle helps a bit, but it still, it still remains problematic. Tickle, in general, works better on, on recent text. So OCR problems are still uh, problematic. It's not a solved uh, problem. Then uh, the adding of the modern Dutch. There you could see uh, two, uh, um, because we have most tools that actually work on modern Dutch and not so much tools that work on his historical text varieties. So you could try to adapt the tools to the, to the language but that you need a lot of training data and it can be very time consuming to get these tools uh, ready. So the other idea was to adapt the language to the tools. Uh, so basically you, you add an extra layer which has a mapping of the historical text to the more modern Dutch and then you do the processing on this additional layer. Of course that is also rather experimental. So in, in the Netherlands you have a, a conference uh, called uh, Computational Linguistics in the Netherlands, and we have started a shared task there um, uh, to, to work on this topic. So uh, there will be some uh, data available, and then people can try and uh, uh, make their results available, and then there will be discussion at the CLIN conference uh, on, on all these approaches and yeah, what are ways forward. So the annotation layers, so um, we start with the post-corrected text, so there is already, uh, so there is the original text always available and then the next uh, annotation layer is the post-corrected text, so that is what comes out of the Tickle uh, processor. Then using Frog, which is also a tool for, for Dutch, uh, we add a lemma, part of speech uh, with uh, uh, sub-features and uh, entities and recognition is used also, also coming from Frog. And then there are layers that deal with the, um, the text structure, so uh, sentence level, paragraph, head, and so on. Uh, what more is planned, but it's not yet there for, for newspapers, and is uh, translation to the modern word forms, uh, entity linking. Um, there are also yeah, it's also some of this already happening, so there is uh, links to a historical lex lexicon from ENL, um, speaker information, the language used, uh, this dependency parsing, and um, yeah, other annotations. But the, certainly the first ones will always be available. The others depend a bit on the, the collection. So indexing and searching goes into our uh, implementation, which is uh, called MTOS, which is the multi-tier annotation search. It's based on Lucene and Solar, which are very uh, scalable index uh, systems. <coughs> uh, so it's also, uh, yeah, it allows parallel searches, so it can, can grow very uh, big. Um, then there is a middleware layer that we call the broker, and which it mixes in all other services like the historical lexicon query expansion or if we need certain kind of joins which don't come natural in if you have a Lucene index, uh, the broker knows how to, to deal with that. And uh, what we are planning on is to have more additional semantic uh, query expansion so you can hook in other kinds of um, um, uh, vocabularies basically to, to have specialized or more generic uh, searches. And uh, the, the format Folia, which is also uh, a format that is, uh, you know, it is not specifically for Dutch, but it is used in the Netherlands a lot. So that is the outcome of the frog parser and it can deal with all these annotation layers. So uh, MTOS can, can read in um, uh, Folia files, but actually the this, this is very highly configurable, so it's also possible in to, to read in other, um, other XML formats. So, for example, for time-based media, you have ELON uh, files, AIF files, 
they, there are also configurations possible for MTOS to read that kind of uh, information. And then, so that basically means that the, the visual layer that you will see that later on that is um, um, doing the, uh, giving you access to the index basically, could also be fed from other kinds of formats. So it's really what is language dependent is, is before the, the indexing and, uh, part. So this is actually getting to the demo. So, so this is the uh, main uh, website of Nederlab. Uh, if you now go to the Onderzoeks portal over here, then you would actually go to the, the current official production version, which has already has the uh, uh, content in there, but uh, it's, it, it's exposing less of the, the, uh, the annotation layers. So I will go to the, um, this first version 2 preview. Which uh, which has more of the interesting uh, functionality. Um, if I click here, it's all Dutch, I'm afraid, but uh, I hope you you'll be able to follow uh, like me just telling what I'm doing. So this is the main uh, main interface um, of of, of Nederlab for searching, and it allows you to search in text, in basically in metadata of the of the 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 items that we are looking at and in, in author information. So I will, and then there are some, some facets here on the site. So I will search for some poetry. Um, let's do that. So we get some matches over here. It find, found uh, 50,000 matches. Um, now I can restrict it a bit more. Uh, for, for example, just to uh, female authors of the, the poetry. So I, I, I go to the metadata of authors and I can say here the gender is, is uh, Frau, female. And search again. So now I get way less. Uh, uh, results, so there are 4,500, and I could restrict it a bit more using uh, a certain year. So if I take the 19th century, I get 288 uh, matches. So you can see there is already some info uh, on author, the genre, which collection it came from, uh, what the dates were, um, and I now I can extend this with a uh, a text search. So that's this top one. So I'll search for some romantic poetry using where the heart appears. Um, but now you will actually see that I cannot really see uh, the text because I have to, to log in. To be logged in, you, you can use your, your Clarin account. Let's see. So now I'm logged in and I can actually see uh, snippets. So you can see per uh, uh, per entry, you can see what were, were the matches there. So we, uh, so now we so you can see the text. Now we it's, it's interesting to do some more more advanced uh, uh, searches. So if we go into zoek in, in text, I will clean out this one, and we do advanced searching. Then it allows you to to do uh, basically CQL, so corpus query and language searches. Um, so I will search for the word uh, heart again, and then followed by a, um, a conjunction. So that is a part of speech uh, tag. These are the CGN tag sets. So uh, I think VG is then the other word will be uh, head. So, uh, so you see actually that down here you find actually the, the, the CQL query. So you can also really write out the CQL if you if you're familiar with that. So we see here uh, the matches, and you can make more of this this visible. So now we we don't see the um, so we can make the part of speech uh, visible. Um, um, which which uh, lemmas are there? 
and actually you I will not I will go to a bit more other search but you can also change the search from uh, using the um, disk basically come from tickle uh, so really the matches the hoofed and uh, the heart you can also change that into the um, uh, the lemma of the uh, so then you will will do some of the, the changes uh, and you for example to to get it all If I turn off some of the, the viewing, you can get a bit more condensed view and you can see the sentences uh, themselves. Oh, okay. Well, I, I will go, I will show, want to show some of more of the, the visualization uh, stuff. So let's do that. So I will, if you want to see more of the CQL uh, stuff, I can uh, show you later. Um, So there was here a query that I should use. So this query basically s looks for um, um, for um, um, should I do this one actually? No, I will do a different one. Sorry, sorry. This one was looking for uh, texts that have Amsterdam in it, and then other locations which are not Amsterdam. So. But let's look for something more closer by, which is Leuven. So all texts have Leuven in it. Um, and then I can show you a bit more of uh, these different views you see right here, um, where are my mouse is here. So with this allows you to have different views on this, this data. So there is a visual um, thing. So here we get um, is it rendering. You get like the, the category, the genre. So here genre is uh, split up. So all our matches are in uh, non-fiction or um, uh, um, uh, magazines, uh, art and history. So you, and you can zoom into uh, these kind of, so if I click on this, you get actual zoom. So they're nice uh, visualizations there. Um, another visualization is to see what, what are, are my hits spread over time. So you can load the timeline. Right over here. And uh, using this, this slider over here, you can actually zoom a bit into the time. And um, you can, this is now per collection, but you can also do, and we only have one. So, but if you do it per genre, you will see how they are spread over genre. Um, Yeah, let me, there is, well, there is also frequency lists that's maybe interesting. There are also statistics giving you how big the, the documents are and so on. And, uh, but here you can find out Leuven and um, I should press a button, little button that's over here. Um, you can also see like, uh, right. This will cre create a regular expression, and then you can see the distribution of letter of words that are in uh, uh, within the, the query of Leuven is still still valid. Um, well, and more uh, is uh, possible. Uh, you can do the other ones is trends, so you can see how Gent and Brugge are also appearing next to Leuven, and then over time. And the other one is you can what button here? You can really save this as your own corpus. So it will stay in your own workspace, and then you can pick it up later and process it again. Yeah. Thank you. I know that many people have been involved in this, but um, could you say something about how this was a response, how this whole development was a response to specific user requests? Um, well, if not, then we are going to ask. The audience. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I don't know exactly how they did it, but uh, I think they have like use cases that they had to. to uh, that was part of the design. Of yeah, yeah. Okay. as far as I know. Yeah. Well, audience questions. Yeah, I think we have time for one more. Well, maybe uh, an issue that was not addressed, and I don't know whether the functionality is part of Nederlab, but. Um, 
linking from the corpora in here to other collections? Is, is, is there a facility that supports? Yeah, so they have this, this uh, it's, it's not there as far as I know, and, but we uh, had discussions about this, uh, at certainly in, within the Meertens team, like how you would like to, to be able to, for example, annotate this further, and uh, but it would be more on the general level of annotation. Um, but there was, yeah. Yeah, there is this thesaurus linking, for example, but okay, that is a different, uh, yeah, but you could, the, the yeah, function, linking, but, but, but yeah, there is levels of linking possible. Okay. Yeah. Still no questions? Yes, one question. Is it a technical question or a question uh, from a user perspective? No, no, very, very current. If we could have the slides. And yeah, the slides are going to be collected okay. and made. Yeah. Uh, I think all yeah. the slides all in the end uh, will be. Uh, they'll become available on the website for this. Uh, I'm trying to upload them now. Okay, the <laughs> work in progress. Um, okay, then I uh, would like to thank the speaker.